moving on in, in a somewhat related topic. Um, so we've seen a kind of growing pool of shared resources in the first community, which is really cool. And it's, you know, all over the place. Chief Delphi, Discord, Facebook, Facebook groups, I don't know, all these other crazy apps that people are talking on. And the Compass Alliance has an extensive, like, pool or group of curated resources called Pathways. So Sarah, can you tell us about what Pathways are and kind of perhaps dive into what the point of our rookie pathway guide is? <laughs> yeah. So I think the Pathways sort of came out of when we were starting the Compass Alliance, you know, we wanted to have all these great resources for teams to have, but we didn't want to recreate the wheel either. And so we were pulling together all, we were compiling these resources, you know, the best of the best, the safe, like the JVN calculator, right? The stuff everyone goes to all the time. But if you're new to the community, you don't necessarily know about. And as we started doing that, we realized it was really hard to find what you wanted. And it was hard to kind of say, well, you want to go look at this one, and then you want to go look at this other one, and then you're going to go over here. And that's where the idea from the pathways came out. It's kind of a curriculum, but really a lot of it is more, it gives you a general overview of the concept, very brief, very short, and then it says, go look at these other resources. You know, we don't want to recreate the wheel. We just want to use what other teams have already created and really highlight it in a way that I think the pathways do a great job of doing. So you'll notice in all of them, there's very little text, um, and most of it is just links to other resources, like the rookie pathway, for example. So that one is a great one to send to teams when they're getting started and they really don't know where to turn. It just walks you through very, very simply all the basics of being a team. All of the pathways are designed to be in multiple parts. So normally there are three stages and um, the rookie one's a little different because it's actually set out based on time, but most of them are sort of three levels. So there's the basics there's an intermediate and there's an advanced that way you can you know if you already know the basics you can skip to intermediate or go on to advanced yeah that's pretty amazing so sarah i know you guys work with a ton of international rookie teams like between australia and you know surrounding continents and countries what do you think the biggest need is for those for those teams that are you know really kind of remote and don't necessarily they're not immersed into like the first culture and don't know to like go on to cheap delphi and specifically search for this term or not go to you know the first website and try to find something unless they have you know half their day completely you know <laughs> open and free like what do you think that teams like what do you see i guess is like the the biggest missing piece from a brand new doesn't know anything about first rookie team I think there's two pieces that are missing. First, I mean, there's stuff that applies to every team and there's stuff that applies just to international teams. You know, for general rookie teams, it's they, you don't know where to start. You don't know where to turn, right? Chief Delphi is great in some situations. It's fantastic for those of us who've been in the community for a decade. If you're getting started, it is not necessarily a friendly and welcoming environment. Um, same with Discord, right? Again, if you're in the community, you know how to use that tool. If you're not, it can be challenging. And has very, um, I mean, it's it's great and it has its place in the community. It's just you need to know what that place is and where to turn and when to turn there. And I think that the Compass Alliance tries to say, hey, you know, this is a good place where you can come. And we're going to make sure that the resources here are high quality. We're going to make sure they're correct. We're going to make sure they're up to date. And it's sort of that safe place where it's, it's going to be high quality and we're going to point you in the right direction at the right time. So I think that's one of the missing pieces. I also remember missing pieces is mentors. You know, you look at these teams and if you have a dedicated mentor, the team will find a way to continue, right? The money, yes, you need money, but a dedicated mentor is going to find money. They're going to inspire the passion and the interest in the students to go find the money. Students on their own can help with that, but it's going to be hard to see it become a sustainable team. You really have to find a couple of mentors who are going to help give that continuity to the team who are going to inspire the students going forward. Internationally, it really depends if you're the first team in the country or, you know, the 50th team in the country, because <laughs> if you're the first, you have to figure out customs, you have to figure out how to pay first, which sounds really trivial. It's not. Um, you have to figure out how to get parts into the country. Um, you know, this year we had to sign something saying that all Andy Mark parts didn't have asbestos in them. Um, you have to sign things constantly saying we're not terrorists, we're not, um, you know, like there's just a ton of stuff like that, that if you don't know it's coming can become really, really tricky. And if you 
you know, third and third two was really lucky. We had the backing of a university to get started. But if you don't have that name behind you and that credibility, it can be really, really challenging to get going. And that's before you even have to deal with visas and customs and getting your robot there. And now with no bag day, we're adding another layer of complexity and difficulty. <laughs> so I think, you know, there's a lot that goes into being an international team that sometimes American teams and domestic teams don't appreciate as much. And so they, with best of intentions, go to help these teams and end up not helping as much as they could because they don't understand those unique challenges because they mm -hmm. haven't lived it. And again, best of intentions, but mm -hmm. sometimes that can get in a really hard place really quickly. Yeah. And I know one thing that we ran into um, when we had, you know, American teams trying to help out um, like a new international team that was really remote on um, the Compass Alliance was that they couldn't even find like one consistent platform to communicate on because, you know, they didn't have Slack in the country that they were working in and it can get really tricky, like all those little things. So everybody on Mechanical Advantage, you guys are only in your third year. And I know that some of your mentors have had experience in first. However, that doesn't change the fact that you have started as a rookie team in a really um, competitive and defensive district. Um, so what was that experience like for you guys? And I guess my my like interest in your experiences, you know, despite your mentors that, you know, started your team and were with you, like they obviously had experience, what type of support did you get? And what do you think would have been kind of more helpful when you started three years ago, but it could be technically, non-technically, because there's a lot of pieces to becoming, you know, a team and actually sustaining. And you guys obviously like had a pretty good start as a rookie team and you're doing okay now, but what was that experience like starting off as a rookie team? I mean, um, so I was one of the founding mentors of 6328. Um, I started it right out of college because I was like, going to need something to do, you know, after getting a full-time job, right? Um, and... <laughs> So it was, it was crazy. I really think I personally underestimated the, the non-technical aspects. Like, how do we structure ourselves? Like, are we going to be with a school? Or are we going to be a community team? That was one of the big questions we had to answer. And, and we eventually went with community team um, just because we wanted more autonomy in our organization. But um, I, it was really you really had to start small. Like some of the initial outreach and fundraising we did is we just set up tables outside of like the local grocery store, or like the local Starbucks and just talk to people about what we were doing and sell raffle tickets, um, simple stuff like that. Like we talk about it, but it was literally $10 at a time that we were raising money. Um, and, you know, looking back, I think having having more resources on, on, you know, how do you set up a 501c3? Like, how do you get bank accounts? Like, you know, how do you, if you're a community team, how do you recruit students? Cause it's not as easy. You're not tied to one particular school. So, you know, looking back, like, I mean, definitely part of it was that, you know, we had the first experience with the robot was like so easy compared to all the structural stuff that we had to, to set up. Um, but I think, um, the best thing that we did to encourage our sustainability was feed directly from FLL. So these two came from FLL, some teams I started in college, and we have 37 kids on our team and 20 of them are FLL alumni through a feeder system that brings eighth graders in to FRC during the fall leading up um, to the FRC season. Um, and there's training involved. We have them drive and operate an off-season competition. Um, and then in the, de the, the December, right before um, kickoff, we do like a little ceremony. We give them a team hat. And then they, as eighth graders, are a part of the FRC team. Because I found there was one girl I worked with in FLL when I was in college. Um, she was going to wait a year before joining FRC after her eighth grade year. And she just she just lost interest. Like she was 14, 15. What? Like that, that happens. Um, and, but when you, they're, the kids are so excited about FLL, they, they don't want to stop doing robots. And so when you provide that direct feeder, um, I think if we hadn't had that feeder, I don't really know how like numbers wise we would have fared. Um, yeah. Like yeah. These, 
Like, we were in sixth grade, we started FLL, and we've basically been with D for five <laughs> yeah, for years now. Years. Uh-huh. It's, it's and, really amazing. Yeah. Uh-huh. And, and, we, and, yeah, we, and we, we both, we're both uh, sophomores now, but we, but we did start in eighth grade, and that was yeah. such an amazing experience. Yeah. Brought us both to our positions right now. I yeah. mean... You know, I, I would I would be in the pits and I would be talking with people and I'd be like, "You're a freshman, no way. <laughs> yeah. You know, because like usually, eighth grade, yeah, because uh-huh, usually freshmen are up in the stands. There's nothing wrong with that, but um, being in a, in a technical role when in and a non-technical role in your freshman year is pretty rare. And you get a whole extra year under your belt, so instead of four years, I yeah, five. Five. <laughs> five. Exactly. You get an extra one, one for free. That's pretty awesome. And it's it's interesting to hear that, you know, for for your team, it was like more of a struggle to get the the team structure going. And that's, it's interesting that you mentioned, like, how do you start a 501c3? It's like, this is the type of stuff that, you know, veteran teams are still struggling with. And it's hard to nail down exactly how to do that because it like, it's completely different state to state. It's completely different for international teams. I can't even imagine. So it's it's nice to see that you know not only are people starting to share like this is how you do this it's like we're trying to compile it in a way where you can actually find it which is really nice so i asked pj in chat because i figure why not keep bugging him about fim stuff um like looking at you know how i i feel like fim is just like another continent in terms of the frc world um being a rookie in fim it's like if you're somebody said if you're way up there um which I'm not sure where in Michigan that is, but um, upper Michigan, it can be really difficult. Um, Somebody said, I think of it like finding Nemo. Nemo is the rookie team. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But he said that in kind of Metro Detroit area, there's tons of teams and resources to reach out to. So that's really cool to see. And I know that even in the international areas, um, there's, there always seems to be this like beacon of a team that is always there to kind of support, you know, the, the surrounding rookies or even, you know, the just under, under kind of supported veteran teams. Um, it's, it's interesting to me, you know, reading through the, the rookie pathway, it's like the most detailed thing in the world. Um, you know, buying parts and, you know, a list of where to buy things. That's like, it's the most simple stuff that you don't think about in terms of if you're completely new to the FRC community, or even if you're not new, it's like, okay, should I be going to home Depot? Like, do I just Google this? Like what, What should yeah. I not be spending? Can I buy this on Amazon? Like, can I buy the the not name brand thing? And, you know, it's it's crazy. And, you know, as Sarah was saying before, like getting parts into the country, which to me, I just think of like body parts being shipped to yeah. Australia and like a kangaroo bringing it back to their lab. But, <laughs> you know, it's like at, if you're an international team and you're trying to figure out like, okay, I got to buy this part, but it's either I buy it from Andy Mark and wait however long, or, you know, could I get something that's more local, but a little different, um, it's really like the, the community conversations that go on that I feel like are giving teams the like better experience in, in like getting through some of these issues. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.